All right, today we're going over exactly why your chest isn't growing and I got some bad news. I fucked up. And this is really disappointing because I've had a horrible chest my entire life. And for the first time, I've been seeing some serious results. And I was excited to share with you exactly how I've been able to do it. Honestly, I had no idea how I was gonna film this video until one night I was minding my own business, driving around at 2 a.m. and then I saw it. A person with the most developed chest I had ever seen. Luckily, they've agreed to help me out for 20 bucks. A quick recap for anybody who isn't familiar with how the chest muscle works. Where'd I put that red? Did that, did you? It was in my ass. The part of your chest that originates on the clavicular head will cause your arm to raise based upon the orientation of those fibers. The part that originates on the sternocostal and the abdominals will actually force your arm back down. This is where people make a huge mistake. They learn how those fibers run and they think, okay, I'll do a decline movement, some incline, and then I'll be good. But the problem is I guarantee you've done that and you've seen little to no results. The answer, it's a little more complex. Can I take my clothes off now? God, no. Why would you even, that's, that's horrible. Why would you say that? What about these? All out. The first thing you're gonna do is for the next four weeks, every time you train chest, you're only gonna do exercises you're able to do unilaterally, one arm at a time. Why is that? Think about it this way. If you've ever done bent over dumbbell rows, I'm sure you walked away and you were fairly torn up, maybe even shit out your spine, but when you put that up against a one arm row, it's not even a fair comparison. The amount you can force that lat to stretch and exaggerate the contraction is just not something you can get with bilateral work. The same exact thing applies to your chest training. When you're doing a traditional cable fly, it becomes immediately apparent that you can only stretch as far as those bound up posterior muscles will let you, and you can only contract your midline. Sure, you can cross those hands, but I'm too OCD for that. And if you're gonna bounce between which hand's on top and which one's below, you might as well stay home, put on your headband, and watch a Suzanne Summers VHS workout because you look fucking ridiculous. When you're focusing on one side at a time, not only can you make sure that shoulder isn't tilting forward, allowing that anterior delt to dominate the movement, but you can also exaggerate the stretch by turning away from the machine as you go into the negative. Now, obviously this is great for any sort of cable fly or even machine fly, but it's also really useful for presses because it allows you to take time and figure out what path gives you a better contraction. For me, setting up a steep incline and driving my elbow in as I contract up allows me to connect with and really engage those fibers that are closest to my sternum even better than I can with a regular coffin press. The next thing you gotta do is stop thinking about chest movements being so linear. Most people think I gotta hit lower chest, I'm gonna press down. I gotta hit upper, I gotta aim up. But as you've clearly seen from the lady of the night we had in here earlier, that all those fibers encircle those big old bags of sand and connect back at the humerus. Start thinking about the orientation of those fibers as potential different paths or angles you can contract on. Which one you choose will determine which fibers are most stressed. One of my favorite ways to start chest day is by pre-exhausting those inner fibers. And you can do this with a band or really lightweight on cables. You're gonna just face away, flex across your body to hit the uppermost fibers that are attached to that sternum, and then you drive that contraction all the way down your sternum, flexing the rest of those fibers that make up your cleavage. Lastly, if you're having trouble connecting with your chest, meaning that at least one of the exercises you do, you feel it all in your delts. Then I would start the workout by hitting one exercise for your posterior delts. That will, at the very least, pull those shoulders back and put them in the best possible position that you're capable of being in, unless you're one of those 18-year-old butt babies whose shoulders are so far rolled forward because they flex their lats all day. If that's you, you're a lost cause. If you haven't checked out this video, I'd watch that next. If you haven't bought one of the programs, I'll link them below. Again, they're all 30 days, 20 videos, 20 bucks. How many of those do you have in there? As always, get after it, get growing. Talk to you soon.